everyone. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, so my name is Sri Wong. I work on Amazon CloudFront. Uh, most of you are developers, and whether you're working on progressive web applications or back-end applications, there's a lot of things that you really need to consider and that you're always worried about. And so this presentation is for us to kind of come to you with a few things that we've heard that are kind of common pain points, and we wanted to try to figure out if there's, there are recipes to just make things a lot more straightforward and a lot more performant. Uh, so the three things that we wanted to talk about today are authentication and authorization of your users, security, and how do you get a really good user experience because you have so many different screen sizes to work with. Uh, some of the things that I'm going to talk about today, there are many different solutions to, uh, but what we were really trying to do is figure out, can we make it very straightforward and easy? And because I work on a content delivery network, I'm very interested in performance. Uh, so a lot of these recipes are focused on how do we get a lot more code and content at the edge? Because we've got 117 edge locations and servers, essentially, in internet exchanges and carrier networks closest to your end users. And we want your end users to have the lowest latency and the lowest response time. So let's talk about authentication and authorization first. There's a lot of work in thinking about how to manage your users and how to manage your salt and hash tables. And so what we wanted to think about in AWS is a lot of different services that really help you with that. So you can use KMS, our key management server, for um, housing your private keys. You have AWS certificate manager, so you can get free SSL certificates and manage your certificates there. Uh, you can have the web application firewall to think about how you want to manage rogue traffic or bot traffic, and Cognito to authenticate your users. And so this example is going to use Cognito. Your web application here, uh, your, your user is going to an Amazon Cognito sign-in page. Uh, Amazon Cognito authenticates your user, and it sends back an encrypted JSON web token. And then what, what happens then? Your application has this JSON web token, but you still need to figure out, is this user going to have authorization to see the content or not. And so in this example, we're going to say, you know, there's private content and there's public content that they should see or they shouldn't see. You could put that logic in your backend application. That means your request has to go all the way to your backend application. You need to decrypt your web token, and you need to figure out, should this user have access to it or not, which means it's also handling a lot of requests that are probably invalid or that users don't have uh, authorization to actually see. So you have to scale your origin, and you have to add in all this logic. We were thinking, do you really need to modify your application logic for something that should be relatively straightforward? And so we thought about, what can we do at the edge? If your request comes into a content delivery network, in this case, Amazon CloudFront, uh, you can create a Node.js function for, uh, with Lambda at Edge. And so essentially, it's going to say, hey, this request is actually coming in for private content. I'm going to decrypt the web token. Is this user actually authorized to see this content? If so, great. Send the request to your backend application and serve the content back. Now, if your user is not authorized to see this content, not a problem at all. You can use the same Lambda function to actually generate a response back, like an HTTP 401. You're not authorized to see this content. So you don't need to put any of that logic inside your application. And if it's just regular public content, the request just lands in CloudFront, and it continues going to your origin. And we, we cache the content, and we serve it back. So a lot of these recipes are kind of going to have a little bit of the similar flavor of how do we just make things super easy to bring a lot of this logic and content to the edge. So that's author, uh, authentication and authorization. Next, security. There's a lot of content out there. People are coming in through HTTP when you really want them to come over HTTPS. Uh, you want to really tell your web application what do you want to do with cross-site scripting. Uh, should you load scripts or style sheets? And typically how you're going to do that is you're going to send headers or security headers back uh, in the response to, from the web request. But then you, again, have to modify a lot of application code. And so again, can we simplify that? So kind of the same pattern, user request comes in. Do we have the content? If so, great, serve the cached content. But if not, then you can fetch the content and have your Node.js Lambda Edge function just add all these security headers in before the response goes back to your end user. And so you've added all your HSTS headers, your cross site scripting headers, everything that you want to add uh, straight from the edge. Another one is user experience. You've got so many different screens to deal with. And so 
what are you going to do with all the different screen sizes and all the different sizes of images? Uh, you may want to manipulate your images to actually crop it to just the, re the part of the image that is most relevant to the, uh, for the user or the screen size. Uh, you may also want to do digital watermarking. And so in this situation, we're going to have the user uh, send a request for an image. Maybe your web application says, I want this image to be 100 by 100. You put the dimensions into the query string. Lambda Edge can read all the query strings and headers as part of your request and say, hey, do I actually already have this object in cache? Great. Serve the content. But if not, I can go and fetch the object. And then when the object comes back, is it actually the image size and everything that we want? If so, great. Cache it, serve it. But if not, I can generate it. You can resize your images. You can add the digital watermarking. Uh, you can pretty much do whatever logic you want within this Node.js function, cache it, and then send it back. So again, authentication and authorization, adding all the security headers that you want, and being able to manipulate your images. So these were kind of the three common pain points that we've kind of heard of that we really wanted to make relatively easy. And then we thought, well, how do we make it just a little bit more exciting? And so we thought about machine learning. And s some of us were thinking, but well, how are we going to add machine learning at the edge? What do we, how do we add machine learning into live workflows? And so this is a recipe, I guess, it's fresh from the oven. Uh, but the royal wedding, everyone loves royals. Everyone wants to see them get married over and over again. Uh, and what Sky News really wanted to do is take machine learning and not just show the content, but actually be able to say, hey, here's everybody that's showing up, and here's information on them. So it was pulling a lot of this data in and, and um, bringing that into its own progressive and interactive live stream. And so how this really worked behind the scenes was we were ingesting a live stream into uh, AWS Elemental Media Services. So you could ingest the stream. It was adding the digital rights. And then it was using Amazon recognition to identify every celebrity and then using uh, a different data source called Gray Media just to add that data in on exactly the profile of every celebrity so that it would be able to show it on the video and on the website. And then it served it securely through CloudFront as well. So this was a really cool way of actually having a live work throw that was still doing as much with security uh, at the edge as possible. Cool. So I hope you enjoyed a few of these recipes. If you do want us to think about more, I'm happy to think about more. Just swing by our booth at 1009. And here's a few other blogs and um, other examples of recipes that we shared as well. So if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks.